All right, hey, welcome to my Ninja Foodi review. I'm going to be using the Ninja Foodi air fryer pressure cooker all-in-one deal you do that I've got. Um, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically just uh, you take an Instapot and an air fryer and make them into one device where you got two different lids, and that's pretty much all it is. It's pretty cool. Uh, it takes up less space than having two separate things, but it is a little bit larger on its own. Um, but it's a good device, works really well, and I'm going to show off how to use the pressure cooker part because, you know, that part is the nice thing and uh, not so much the air fryer piece because uh, really all that is a, is a convection oven that you put on your countertop and anybody that thinks they're incredible is just, you know, kind of dumb. But anyway, we're going to start off by making a uh, nice cream of chicken and wild rice soup. Uh, I'm going to do this because my brother doesn't understand how to make food in it uh, for some reason. So I'm just going to show how like simple it is. You don't need to use the stupid book that comes with it because the book is kind of stupid. So that's the first part of the review. Just take that book and it's not like set in stone rules for anything. It's more of like a guideline, you know, like in the Pirates of the Caribbean or Caribbean, whatever you want to say. But uh, yeah, to make the soup, you're going to need a couple of ingredients. Number one is a can of cream of chicken soup. It's pretty easy. I mean, if you're making a good amount and you want to have like this, uh, you'll need couple of chicken breasts I use two because again I'm making a lot of soup so I've got uh, two large chicken breasts that I put in there frozen and uh, I've got the cream of chicken soup of course and the wild rice you got to have the wild rice this is important otherwise you can't have soup um, now depending on how you know rich you want this you're either going to want to use some water with your cream of chicken soup or I like to use half a cup or half a can of milk and half a can of uh, water so or well half and half um, but yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. It's pretty simple and a little bit of butter. But we'll get to that when we start cooking. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm making this video for my brother Matt because he's a, a master of cooking with a Ninja Foodie. Not. But anyway, I've got some frozen chicken right there. Completely frozen. Two breasts, in fact. I don't know how many pounds that is, but it's a good amount. And I'm going to add about two cups of water. When I say two cups of water and about, that means it's about two cups. I don't really care if it's exactly two cups or not. I just need enough liquid in there that it's actually going to, you know, create pressure and cook. So then I'm going to put the old lid on yonder. I'm going to put it on the right way even. There it goes. On the right way. Turn that over to, uh, you know, pressure or seal, whatever the hell it is. And then I'm going to go over here on my dial. And I'm going to turn it over here to uh, pressure. I'm going to put it in for about 20 minutes. And uh, it's on high already, so I don't even care. So about 20 minutes later, it'll be sealed up and ready to go. And uh, I'll come back and look at this. And we'll go from there once it's ready. Here's a, a quick, you know, tip that the pros would use if you were one. Uh, you could pretty much hear that there's a lot of sound coming out of this thing right now as it's heating up and you're just kind of waiting for it to seal at this point. If you know what you're doing, you can, you know, tell that there's a lot of hot air coming out of this vent here. I wouldn't hold your hand over because it's freaking hot. But if you push down on it really hard, real fast at this point, it'll seal right away. And that safety catch right there is how you know it's sealed because it'll pop up. I and mean, then now it's, you know, building actual pressure and not wasting all the liquid that's inside, you know, venting it up. So there you go. Now we just continue to wait. All right, so I went ahead and let that uh, naturally release, uh, you know, more so because I forgot and I was busy doing other stuff. Anyway, so I'm take the old lid off there. And I should be able to just pull that chicken right out. And what you're looking for is it for it to be kind of like this where it just falls apart. Shouldn't be like, you know, what's it called? Bad. But uh, you might have to grab it with tongs or something because tell you what, these forks aren't doing the job very well. Yeah, look at that go. Yeah, I would say use tongs. Or if you don't have tongs, you know, burn your hands. Just get, just get strong. Get strong and burn your hands. All right, so have the chicken set it aside. And uh, now I gotta dump this out. And then after this is dumped out, I'm gonna start cooking the rice. All right, so now we're gonna do the rice. So first thing we're gonna do is uh, take about two tablespoons of butter or so, 
and uh, I turn it to sear slash saute, and that just makes it basically turn into a, uh, a pan on the stove, essentially. And what I'm going to do here is just get this butter melting a little bit. Melting butter. And while that's melting, I'm going to throw in two cups of wild rice. You can use more or less depending on your, you know, tastes. But I want a pretty decent amount of rice in mine. It's about a tablespoon of butter per cup of rice, essentially. Or you can use more, doesn't really matter. But the idea here is to kind of roast the rice a little bit. Not cook the rice, like fry it, that's not the goal. But it's to just get some uh, initial cooking on your rice. To, like some people say like browning, I don't know. But I just say roasting. I'm roasting the rice a little bit. Because that will make the rice have a nicer texture and brings out the flavor a little bit more. It should have kind of like a, a nut aroma to it. Once it's, uh, once it's good and cooked off. Also you should rinse your rice before you dump it in the pot. It's always good to have clean rice. Not that it really matters all that much to be honest, but you do you. If you're going to deal with the, the hassle of doing this, you might as well rinse it off too. It's up to you though. There's make sure you stir it fairly often. Now I'm gonna get my water, so don't go with what the foodie guide says. Go with what the package on of your rice says. If it says to use a cup and a half of water to every cup of rice, do that. So in my case it's gonna be three cups of water because my uh, two cups of rice. That sizzling means it's working. This will also help to jump start the, uh, the next process, which you could steam this, but I'm gonna do the pressure cooking way because it's a little bit quicker, and I like the way it comes out that way. And so as you start to see some of the rice really get browner, I don't know if you can see much because, you know, I got my hand in the way. But uh, yeah, you know, you'll see the, the rice get a little bit darker in some spots. The white part of the rice might become more whiter. Whatever. It'll continue to sizzle. You know that much. Mm, it smells about right. So now I'm going to add my water. One cup. Could use like a larger measuring cup. That goes up to three cups, but I didn't. All right, so uh, there you go. Got my rice in the water, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my top back on. Set it to pressure and uh, time. You just gotta kind of figure it out yourself. I figured about 10 minutes is right for wild rice for me. Uh, the book actually will tell you, I think like almost 20 minutes maybe. It's like the high end of it. So don't do that, because that'll come out as mush. But uh, now that that's done, start working on the chicken. All right, so got the chicken here. Uh, this part's easy. Just take the chicken, and it should just kind of shred and fall apart just like that. There's not a whole lot to it. If you wanted to, if it wasn't like easily doing, going like this, you could, you know, you could slice it with a knife and make it into chunks. I'm not a big fan. I kind of like the shredded version of this. But yeah, you can do this as long as it's cooked enough. You can shut it all apart, no problem. You can see it's not dried out at all, which is pretty cool. If you did dry it out, it's because you didn't uh, use enough water. Two cups, though, should be good for two breasts. And yeah, this isn't that complicated. Just shred up some chicken. Easy. You could even use your bare hands. You know what? Let's bare hands this. Look at that. Bare handed.
You just squeeze it and pinch it and it comes right apart. That's how you know it's good. If it didn't come right apart, that means you screwed up. You didn't cook it long enough. <laughs> or you didn't let it naturally release. Natural release is the other part. It's like it'll help you it'll help you really cook everything well. So there we go. Chicken shredded. Done. Uh, next thing is to prepare the soup, which just involves me opening a can. And I don't think anybody really cares to see me open a can, so I'm not going to do that. Just finished the uh, process here. Go into vent. And now we let it vent. And if you wanted to vent it faster because you're bored or you don't have time, take a knife or something, you can push down on that. And that'll vent even quicker. Okay, all right, there we go, got rice. Now, I didn't mention before, but uh, you, if you're going to add some, uh, if you're gonna add like carrots or vegetables, like celery or something, the time to add it would be then. But uh, that's not when I did it, because I forgot that I had carrots and celery, so, oh well. So there we go, got our rice, it's cooked. Um, again, you kind of have to, to get an idea of how of how you uh, how your particular environment is for cooking things, but I found about ten minutes is good, and you can use pretty much what the directions say. This is a little bit wetter than I'd like, so I'd probably add a little bit less water next time, but it's not bad. So next, I'm gonna throw my chicken in there. Yep. Chicken's in the pot. Give it a little stir to help with that. And then I'm gonna add my soup mix, the condensed soup. It looks it looks glorious right now. I can I can assure you of that. And then I gotta add half a can of water. Or if you wanted to add a full can of water, that's fine too. It's your choice. It's your soup. Do whatever you want to do. So here goes a half can of water. And then I need half a can or yeah, half can of milk. And you can add more liquid if you wanted to. It's up to you. But uh, more liquid means you get more soup, but it'll be a little thinner. All right, so once you get all that in there, give it a good mixing. And then you can set it to saute on high. And then you just let it sit and cook. And that's it. And you're not really doing much other than mixing it so that all the uh, condensed soup becomes... You know, basically soup. Uh, but you're doing that, and then you're gonna wait for it to get hot. Once it's kind of boiling a little bit, once it bubbles, that means that it's cooked and it's it's warm enough and it's cooked through. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That is how you make the soup, and it works out pretty good. My refrigerator doesn't like when you leave it open though, so I'm gonna shut it. All right, and there you have it. Got a nice uh, cream of chicken and wild rice soup here. And a uh, ham sandwich I made uh, separately because reasons. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, this soup's pretty good. Not bad at all. It's uh, actually really good soup. Uh, I mean, if you wanted to make your own cream of chicken soup, you could probably make it even better. But uh, this is good. Big fan. The only thing I would add, carrots and celery if you got it. And uh, if you wanted to, you could actually make this whole thing in like one shot uh, without having to take the chicken out of the pot and shred it. You could thaw the chicken and dice it up and then throw your chicken, rice, vegetables all in at one time and cook it all together. You'd probably be able to do that for like 15 minutes and come out with about the same thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. The Ninja Foodie is not a bad product at all. It's uh, it's really good if you, you know, 
don't want to put a lot of time in the meals or effort. Like I just turned the chicken on. It was two frozen chicken breasts. Turned it on for 20 minutes. Came back when I felt like it. And then uh, finished the rest of the cook here. So pretty good stuff. Pretty easy. And I would recommend that to anybody. Uh, now, uh, I'm about to do some more gaming content because yeah, I haven't done very much in a while. Uh, the next thing is going to be about Cyberpunk 2077 and why they probably should have waited until 2077 to release it because it's a hot mess of bugs, garbage, and horrible design choices. And I'll just go over all my thoughts on those in that video. But until the next time, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, all those great things. Helps me get more exposure, helps me get uh, more subs, I guess. Yeah, that. Uh, but until next time, try not to die.